Good evening. I hope you've had a good day. And thank you for joining in uh, this webinar. Uh, first of all, I just want to apologize for not holding a webinar last month. And this was because um, I did travel and I thought I would be able to handle it during the travel, but unfortunately this did not happen. And so that's why we did not have the webinar. And uh, I am still away uh, for some time. And for that reason, um, I might experience a few challenges with having these webinars. For instance, today I thought I would have a, a live webinar, uh, but because of an engagement, I had to record this webinar so that you can have it. I apologize for the lighting. Uh, where I am, it is still dark. So I hope that you'll still be able to get the message intended from this webinar. So thank you again for always signing up and joining into our webinar and uh, for giving feedback. Uh, I've, I've received a lot of feedback and I am taking it into consideration and I believe that it will inform our next few webinars. So because of my being away, this means that sometimes uh, I might be able to hold live webinars. I'm particularly very hopeful that next month I'll have a live webinar, but should that not be possible, I will pre-record the webinars and share them. Uh, so if you have questions uh, after the webinar, please uh, send an email to me. I will try to respond to them in person. And if I believe that they, they would inform content for another webinar, then I would hold a webinar to address uh, those issues. Uh, the other alternative that we might have with time is probably to change the day. Uh, it might be easier to have a webinar on a Friday as opposed to on a Thursday, because uh, your Thursday evening, I mean, your, your, your Friday evening is my weekend here. So probably we, we might consider that if necessary in the future. So first, again, I also want to thank you for responding to the survey I sent where I was asking you to share your ideas on future webinar topics. And I got a number of responses and many people with very varied topics and I'm trying to group them into, to see how, what kind of webinars we'd be having. Uh, so from A to Z and especially of investing, it sounds like this word investment is uh, an important word to most people. A few people talked about medical covers, especially in retirement. And if you're one of those people, I would encourage you to go back to our YouTube channel we did have a series of webinars last year uh, on medical covers. We had a guest speaker who expounded on those uh, covers and I believe uh, you might be able to get some of the answers there. Uh, many questions on investing for retirement and I would also suggest that you go back to our YouTube channel and look at what we've covered so far. We've had uh, many, many series of webinars on that topic and we'll continue to have them. But before we, we we address them later in future. There's a lot that you can learn from the previous content. Housing as well. Uh, we also had two webinars with a guest speaker. I would also encourage you to go look at it. We primarily focused on retirement uh, homes. And I know housing is, 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 is a bigger topic than just retirement homes. It could also be uh, a ho housing for your current needs. Um, so I will look at, uh, I will share the summary of those future webinars via emails and a schedule of them so that you can be prepared to, to listen when they come due. So today we, we talk about the greatest investment that you can ever make. Now, it's, it's interesting how every time we have a webinar that talks about uh, investments, they tend to attract a lot of participants or interested people. Particularly, uh, this is how I started my webinars way back in 2000, and I was amazed at the number of people who wanted to join in. Some webinars were even full. Uh, we had uh, more than 100 people, and some people were actually locked out. So investment is a big deal, and, and, and I understand the interest you have in this topic. And definitely investments, uh, there, there are various 
ways we look at investment, sometimes use the word investment where it is rightfully so and sometimes where it is not. So for example, when you buy a very good pen or a very good suit, sometimes you can say, oh, I made a good investment. And sometimes you put your money somewhere and it grows and you say, oh, that was a good investment. It's important to distinguish between investments and good purchases. So when you buy something good or something of value, if you don't intend to sell it or to generate an income from it, we don't call that investment. Uh, we, call it, we call it a good purchase. But when you put our, your money with the intention of growing it, or when you put your money somewhere with the intention of generating an income from an activity or from the item you buy, then we call that an investment. So we'll be looking at something you put your money into or your resources into with the intention of growing it and making your situation better. So with investment, we've seen a lot of FADs. FADs are what you call investment inputs, opportunities that gain popularity so fast. And many people put in their money in there just to collapse uh, within a, a, a short time because probably uh, in most cases, they tend to, to, to promise above average returns. Uh, usually there is no clear way of how they're making money. You just told put your money here in a few months, it will be this much. Many of them are based on speculation. <clears throat> and we've had a few examples in Kenya, such as the Desi, uh, where people are putting in money and you're just generating a certain return and more people kept on joining. And at the height of it, it just collapsed because there was no clear way of making money. It was just uh, you collecting money and paying it back. And when many people join, then there's a lot of collections and they cannot sustain those returns, then people lose money. Uh, some fads I would call like quail business. Um, it was a business in one way, but the, the, the reasoning behind it was there was just this craze about quail eggs are very, very important and the demand is growing and no one could explain why the demand is growing. Some people made money and at one point the business collapsed because it was not a typical uh, investment. It was being driven by speculation. And in my opinion, cryptocurrency the same. It is a speculation in the sense that uh, you, you mine something and you can't tell exactly how the value goes. It is just driven by maybe the next person wanting to buy it at a higher price than you bought it, but probably there is no actual explanation behind why they want it. It's just probably the expectation that the price will go. So. I wanted to distinguish between speculation and investments so that when we look at investments, we have a clear picture of what we are looking at. So we have a number of investments and especially when it comes to finances. Uh, I think the, 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 the simplest form of, of investment that probably anyone has engaged in is a savings account where you put in a hundred shillings and at the end of the month, it is 102. The money has grown. And then you can advance further to things like fixed deposit accounts, which will give 7.5 plus returns. Money market funds, right now they are doing well, 8 to 11 percent. Then you can get into advanced things like treasury bills and treasury bonds. You can buy shares, which have great potential for making money. For example, Safaricom shares, we bought them at five bob, they went down to two bob. If you bought it at two bob, at one point that share was at 45 bob. That's a massive return, but it also goes down from 45 bob to 20 shillings, 18 shillings. I mean, potential for high return and high high loss. I mean, high losses. And sometimes you go into business, and that's a form of investment where you you, you have a business that uh, you're doing something about it. You either you, you you're either trading or you're manufacturing something, producing something, a good or a service. You sell it and you make money. We, many of us are familiar with uh, rental property where we either buy land or buildings for, I mean, for, for appreciation of value or for rental income. And all those are different forms of investments. And sometimes we ask ourselves, uh, what is the one investment that I can make that will guarantee me good returns, that will guarantee me, I mean, uh, I'll make money. 
And I'm sorry to tell you that there is no single investment that amongst the ones I've talked about that can guarantee you, that has no risk and that guarantees you a sure return. Yes, many of them are very, very low risk. And over time, they you don't suffer any loss, but there are no guarantees in this life, just like in many, many other things. So in that case, then, what should we be looking at? We should be looking at the, re uh, at the investments that are likely to give us the best return. And then you ask yourself, what would that be? So in my experience and in what I know so far, the greatest investment you can make is not investing in any of those things I have talked about or any other financial uh, products. The greatest investment you can make is to develop yourself. And this is what we call making a human capital investment. Now, I would want to imagine, as a, for those who are parents, uh, what is the greatest investment you can do to your children? And what is the greatest investment probably all of us have enjoyed? We know how our parents uh, did everything they could to ensure that we have a good education. They, 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 they took loans, they sold property, they borrowed money, they did everything they can. And most of us still do the same for our children because we feel that if we give them that education, that opportunity to learn, to gain knowledge, to gain skills, then they are likely to take advantage of opportunities that will enable them to generate an income and be able to sustain themselves or be financially independent. That is the greatest investment that you can make in yourself. Developing yourself, learning, there's a lot to learn in this world, gaining knowledge on, on various topics, acquiring skills, and then you will be able to convert that knowledge, skill, and, and I mean, what we call the human capital into other forms of capital. So if you have knowledge, if you're highly skilled in something, what happens is that people will seek your services. People will seek what it is that you're producing. They will come in and pay you money and you will be able to transform your human capital into financial capital. If you're knowledgeable about relationships, if you know how to, 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 to relate with people, uh, to network, you will be able to utilize that human capital that you have and convert it into social capital and be able to reap benefits from that. And that goes on to many other forms of capital. So developing yourself is the one thing that will enable you to have the greatest investment or the greatest return on that investment. And that investment, you can be able to convert it into many, many other things that you need, to, 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 you need in life. So look at it from from that angle, we do it for our children. We, our parents did it for us. Uh, they took us to school so that we can learn. When we get uh, jobs, the next thing we do in most cases is we go back to school to study more. Sometimes not necessary to school, but we employ, uh, we, we look for opportunities to learn. Is it whether it is what we are doing in school, what, what we are doing at work, we advance the knowledge of what we are doing. And we do that sometimes, even when we are looking for promotions. Many people will go back and have a, an additional master's degree or another degree or another certification with the hope that that advancement in knowledge will result into an increase in income. So we do it for, 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 for marriages as well. Many young people, before they get married, they'll go for a premarital counseling. They're basically trying to learn how to to succeed in marriage and they, they, they deploy their time, their energies and, and resources to ensure they gain that knowledge, hoping that they will reap their return on that investment. And I believe that even when we think about it in our context, I believe most of us are here because we want to learn more about to manage money. Then we need to do the same when it comes to our finances. So we need to learn to gain knowledge, to gain the skill of managing money well. We need to master that. And with that, then we will have the greatest return. So just like you, you, you put in time, you put in money, you put in effort in school to learn and to succeed, we need to do the same thing when it comes to 
financial capital. I mean, learning how to manage our money. So what do you need to learn when it comes to, I mean, becoming um, uh, good at managing your own money? We'll still go back to the education example. So look at children. Uh, wh when children go to school for the very first time in, their, in the elementary school, we see them doing certain things. Uh, they are taught the alphabet and they keep on repeating that alphabet over and over and over and over again. When you're learning a new song, you repeat the song over and over and over again. If you're preparing for a performance, let, let's say a music performance, you go in there and practice what you will do during the, pra uh, the performance. So you actually do the thing that you're learning and you, you, you practice what you will actually do. So that's another way of learning. And then you also retrieve what you have learned. So in the case of a young child, you keep on asking them questions. Uh, A1 plus one equals, and they retrieve the knowledge that they have, they say two. And the same thing when it comes to, uh, to, to performances. Uh, you, you, you retrieve what you have practiced and you actually do it. So the, this is one thing I am beginning to learn um, recently that we learn in three stages. You sense the knowledge, you commit it to short-term memory, and then you, re, you entrench it in the long-term memory. And, and, and these stages are very, very important. And even when you think about learning about money, um, and, I, and I used to find this, especially when it came to retirement benefits, I still find it today when it comes to retirement benefits. So we would hold the, uh, we would teach people about pensions, uh, we would sign them up for, 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 for pension products. And then every year we would go for member education, we would go for annual general meetings where we would repeat sort of the same, same information. But what you find is that people ask the same, same questions again and again and again. And now I can explain it using this because when we learn these things during a meeting, we commit them to short-term memory. And if we don't do anything to entrench them into the long-term memory, we just forget. And that is why even as we manage our money, we do certain things and we believe we have learned only to realize later that we made a mistake or we did something that we didn't believe we could actually do that. I thought I knew these things. But the reason is what you learned, you only committed it to short-term memory and you did not entrench it in the long-term memory. Now, there is a problem with short-term memory. First of all, by definition, it is short. So it only holds information for a very, very short time. So come next year, when you need to study your pension statement, you can't remember, it's long-term, it's one year. But George Miller did a research and what he has, his research findings were that we can only hold seven items in short-term memory, plus or minus two. So we can hold five to nine uh, items in our memory, in our short-term memory. Now you can imagine with the competing needs and ideas and things going on in your life, you can only hold about seven things in memory. And that is why sometimes you won't even remember where you've placed your, the keys. You, you could be holding something and you're busy looking for it. That explains it because your short-term memory is limited and it can only hold so much. As we advance in age, there's a lot of things to, 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 to think of. And, and, and the younger you are, the easier it is to hold I mean, things in short-term memory because you don't have a lot of things. I remember a friend of mine told me, if you want to find your lost kids in the house, look for the, the young ones. They, they will find them because the, the, their, their mind is not so cluttered with so many things as we are. So if they are looking for the kid, they are likely to see it. So as, as you advance in age, chances are you have so much in mind, a lot going on, and there's that competition in what remains in your short-term memory. So chances are what you learn. If it is not something you are you, you engaged in, you are you, you are current, you are constantly repeating or practicing or retrieving from your memories, chances are you're going to lose it. So the most important thing then is not just to learn, not just to attend a webinar, not just to read a book, not just to attend a seminar. It is to put into action what you actually learn. So you need to re re repeat uh, it to yourself. You need to remind yourself what you've learned. And that is why we take notes. 
And then not just take notes, but take notes and review those notes. And then later we practice what we have learned. So you've learned about medical insurance. You might not necessarily need a medical insurance cover now because probably your employer is providing that. But if you want to be knowledgeable to, to have that skill of medical insurance, you can actually take time and research in the market. Go out there and seek information about medical insurance. You can ask for several quotations. You can have discussions with the medical providers and you can actually make a decision as based on the knowledge that you have at the moment, this is the right uh, medical cover I, that I would take if I had to take one. Or if I was retiring today and I was 65 years old, this is the medical cover I would do. And you can continue doing that over time, every year to just see what has changed. Are there new products in the market? And then when you have an opportunity to either teach someone or to explain to someone who is seeking that information, the more you do it, the more it entrenches in your memory. So it does not mean that you, 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 you cannot become an expert or you cannot be knowledgeable in something that you don't need now. If it is something important, something you think that you will need at one point, you can actually do that. So continue learning about the subject matter that you're interested in. If it is finances, take notes because your memory is very short term or review the recordings of webinars or the seminars or whatever it is where you're learning from, review the books that you have read, but most importantly, practice what you are learning. So if you learn about money markets, please sign up for a money market, put in 10,000 shillings there and observe what happens and become an expert in money markets. When you learn about pension plans, do something about it, attend the AGMs, attend the meetings that are organized, learn. And when you hear somebody ask about something that you know, share what you know. And that way you'll be entrenching that into your long-term memory. So we know the importance of learning. We did it to get our first job. We do it to earn promotions. Then why do we stop? Why do we stop at one point and we say, oh, now I'm tired. Oh, I don't want to learn anything. I'm done with studying. What you realize is that the more you, I mean, if you stop learning, then it means you're not gaining more skills. It means that you have less to offer. It means that you're not developing your human capital. You're putting a, a cap on the human capital that you have. And that definitely will reflect on the work that you do and the way you do your, your things. So if you're in the work environment and there are other people who are developing themselves, they, their skills will become visible. And what will happen is that you'll watch them be promoted, increase their income, while you're wondering and complaining that your income is not growing probably because there is, you're not investing in your human capital. So it's important that we continuously learn about the areas we are in and not just in the areas that we are in, but even in the new areas we would want to go into. So we all know that you are going to retire someday, especially those who are in employment because there is a retirement age in your organization. But what will you do when you retire? Then you need to start learning about different things so that when that time comes, you're ready for it. So many people will keep on saying, oh, I have no idea what, what, what I can do in retirement. Why, why not learn the next th thing that comes, the next opportunity that comes, if you really, really have no idea what you'd want to do? Uh, there are things going around that probably will interest you. Start learning about them. And as you learn, you'll probably say, okay, I really don't have an interest in this. And then you move on into the next thing. And as you do that, you'll stumble or you'll come across one thing or several things that you might actually be very, very interested in. So learn. Become an, an expert in the field that you are in or in the field that you'd want to be in. And people will seek your expertise. They will pay for it. You will grow your income. You'll have the money. You need to invest in other financial products that, and then you'll be converting your human capital into financial capital. And that becomes a cycle in life. You cannot stop learning. There's a saying, I don't know who said it, that says, you are either growing or dying. So if you're not growing, then you're actually dying. So it's important to keep alive 
that we continue learning new skills, we apply the knowledge that we have, and then we will reap the benefits. So focusing on, uh, on, 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 on finances and even going by what you shared in the survey I did about future webinar topics, most people's concerns are on growing their income. How do I grow my income so that I'm able to do the things that are important to me and to be able to invest for a later life? My first thing, my first recommendation would be to grow your income, first develop your human capital. What is it that you have to offer that people can pay you for uh, so that you grow your income? It's, it's, it's the way we started in our careers. It's the way to grow in our careers. Develop your human capital. You need to learn something about what you do and what you intend to be paid for. Learn about how to manage money. And like any serious learning that we see, even when you look at how children learn, they learn by practicing what they do. You teach them how to walk by helping them make the steps and they walk and eventually they are independent and they're able to walk. You teach them how to read by reading out loud to them and helping them to read, correcting them and encouraging them until they're able to do that. You have to do the same when it comes to money. These skills do not come naturally to us. You have to develop them. So learn how to manage money. Learn the basics of, uh, of, of succeeding with money, winning with money. But most importantly, practice those things that you learn. If you just read, commit them to short-term memory, and you have no way of entrenching them in your long-term memory, in future, when you have an opportunity to make a financial decision, you're likely to make the same same decisions you made probably years before because you're not able to retrieve the knowledge that you had. So what I would encourage you is learn. And I'm glad that you're in this webinar and you are learning about how to manage money, how to make the greatest investment. But this in itself will not serve you well. This in itself will not uh, make you a master in managing money. You have to repeat or remind yourself of what you know you have to practice what you know and you have to commit that to long-term memory so how how would you think of 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 um of just learning without practicing and and let me use examples like when you go to driving school you can actually learn it in theory um you you you, you can you can read about driving and i mean you can watch videos about driving uh, or, or maybe even pilots can learn the theory about how to fly a plane. But would you be confident uh, to be, I mean, to fly in a plane where the pilot comes on, on, on I mean, and says, uh, you guys, this is my very first time to fly a plane. I have had many, many years um, learning how to fly a plane, but I've never actually flown one. So this is my first time and I wish you a good flight. Would you really, really want to be in that flight? Or would you want to ride in a car where somebody has done a lot of theory, but they have never handled a car? And, and I think that, 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 that probably paints a picture of what we need to do. Um, it is not just the theory, it is the practice that is important and the more experienced somebody is, we go to the most experienced doctors, the most experienced surgeons. When we hear that we are, we, I mean, if, if you knew that the doctor who's going to operate on you, the surgeon who's going to operate on you, you're the first person he has ever laid his hands on, chances are you, you, you'd you say, no, let me look for, a, for another one. So the more you learn, the more you practice, the more knowledgeable you become, the more, you will be able to offer others and also offer yourself. So how do we learn then? If we have to be that, I would encourage you to be curious. Want to know about various things. There's a lot going on. If, if you're thinking about investments, um, I just mentioned a few. Look at what investments are you in? What investments are you not in? Just be curious. How does it work? If you can afford to try it out. For example, if you've never had a money market account, you, you can open a money market account with as minimum as 500 shillings. Be curious, how does it work? Open an account, see how it works and learn. 
the next thing you need to do is to do the actual learning. Read, observe, watch, ask questions, depending on whatever it is that you need to learn about. And then practice what you learn. Do it. And then over time, teach other people. What you realize is that majority of people who have a lot of knowledge on a certain topic eventually want to share it. And as they share it, they entrench it in their memory. And it becomes easier and easier for them to actually teach more and more as they do it. So there's a slogan, there's something that is said about surgeons. They are told, see one, do one, teach one. Why don't we borrow from that profession when it comes to our money management? You see one thing or you learn one thing, you do it and then you teach someone else to do it. And I'm very grateful for majority of many of my clients, majority of my clients actually, when they learn about some of the products that they didn't know about before and they get to, 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 to actually utilize them, that is the, to practice, they open those accounts, they start saving money in those accounts, they invest in those accounts. The one obvious thing that I notice with majority of them is that they refer someone else to have the same product. That is somebody who has learned that is somebody who has mastered that particular financial product. And that is somebody who will not forget because by teaching others, by practicing, they have entrenched it. And then once you learn one product, then you move on to the next one and you move on to the next one. And as you do this, you actually come to realize that you're becoming an expert because you know how money market works. You know how pension funds work. You know how treasury bills work. You know how fixed deposit work. I mean, within no time, you're using almost all financial services products. Of course, those that are aligned with what you want to achieve with your money. So I hope I've challenged you enough uh, regarding the greatest investment that you can ever make. It is not investing in stocks. It is not investing in bonds. It is not investing in anything else. It is investing in yourself. And as you gain this knowledge, you will be able to actually do all those other investments and many, many more, even beyond the financial, building your financial capital. By building or by investing in your human capital, basically what you're doing is that you'll be able to convert your human capital into other forms of capital. That could be financial capitals, social capital, spiritual capital, any other form of capital that you need to grow. So invest in yourself. Your parents already did that in you. You're already doing that in your children. You have probably already done that for yourself. Don't stop. Continue doing that and reap the benefits. And that brings me to the end of our webinar today. I pray that you will take the challenge to learn and to practice and to teach others so that what you learn, you entrench in yourself. So if you have any questions regarding uh, this webinar or anything else, I would encourage you to write an email to rose.wakiria at retirementsolutions.co.ke. That's the same email you received uh, the invitation to the webinar from. And I will do my best to answer your questions. If the question warrants uh, a webinar, then we will be able to handle it. But thank you once again for always signing up and joining in the webinar. And I wish you the very best. Thank you.